Hey there. I hope you're doing good. Today I have the uh, Carolina Tar Heel colors that I poured the other day. I've got three 8x10 canvases that I just did a dirty pour flip cups on. Three of those. I have a 10 inch wooden clock that I'm going to make here and you know, I pre-primed it and, and poured over that and then I had told you about the six pack of uh, metal they came in a six pack metal I don't know what you call them decorative stuff and there is a stand and a hanger so you can use it either way and I painted just one of those with the same colors as well and I just taped it to hold it down while I was painting it and so today but it, that is that came from Michaels and it, this was in a six pack and then these were two dips that I did on just something that came in the mail that was just heavy duty paper or lightweight paper I did a dip and laid them down and they dried and so there they are and those can be used for a background for artwork and put in a frame they can be used to make jewelry with so I'm going to put those aside but what I'm doing today I took the UNC logo and printed it on my printer and then I taped over it with uh, just packing tape just the wide packing tape that you pa tape up boxes with so I put like three strips over it over the piece of paper and then I cut it out so now it's not like a flimsy piece of paper it's got a plastic coating on it and I'm going to lay it down on the canvas and just center it and it never hurts to have a ruler nearby just to make sure that you are about the same distance either way I think I'm pretty centered there and then I'm just going to use this as a pattern and trace around it And I have two options. I was either going to hand paint it with a paintbrush, which takes more time, just the outline. I'm not painting in the whole thing. I'm just doing the outline so that you can still see the, the uh, pour underneath it. So it's going to be see-through looking. But I thought about either painting it with the paintbrush or using a writer bottle. So I've got me a nice sharp pencil and this is I'm just tracing out the shape. Okay I forgot to do the center parts so I need to put it back get it centered and do the triangles in the middle. But I thought this would be the quickest easiest way to do this because I've got a festival in Chapel Hill on Sunday and I thought what better thing than to have a few pieces that are Chapel Hill colors. So I've got the outline and I've got paint and I've got a little like one ounce um, condiment thing or I don't know my husband had surgery and they had little cups that you know they give you for to take medicine with it may be a medicine cup I'm not even sure so I have that to put paint in but I do have this is you buy them just like this with a lid a top and a lid and what you can do is just unscrew a bottle of paint and screw this onto the bottle and you have 
whatever color you need and I want to try this out before I do it on the actual canvas because if I can't get the control I need I'm going to do it with the paintbrush. So I've got a piece of paper and let me see aha uh -huh. what they do is they put a paper liner in the top of the lid you have to remove it before you can use it so why they do that I do not know and this is actually pretty low there's not a whole lot of paint in here I'm gonna add some black this is Prussian blue and I'm gonna add some black paint to it and I'm not adding any water I don't want it to be runny I'm gonna put this screw this back on and I'm going to put the lid on while I shake it because you don't want paint coming out of your tip of your bottle flying everywhere so I get pretty good control with that this is not I do have the writer bottle like this it has a lot of paint marks on it this has a needle this one is just plastic that comes down to a point so this is not as fine of a line as you get with the writer bottle what I could do too which would even it might make it even better I could take this top off and put it on this bottle So I'm going to see what this one looks like and you have to squeeze and get that water and the white out first before it comes out of here so that worked now I don't have any water in this and I'm wondering if I should just put a drop or two I think that's a little darker than I want it to be so I'm wiping that off and I did clean all of these with um, the Dawn dish liquid on a damp paper towel soaked it down and then wiped it back off with the damp paper towel I'm going to add a brighter blue to this because there's very little paint in this bottle. I'm going to add more water. I've discovered that if you don't have enough water in it, I guess it's hard for it to come out of the needle as when it's thicker so you do need to water your paint down just a little bit to come out of this very fine needle I'm also going to stick the top back into it and just make sure that that needle is totally cleared out and there's no blockage or anything like that so just putting it in and going up and down a little bit and that makes sure that your your uh, needle is not clogged up these these writer bottles are really cool whoever invented them it was smart
I just don't have a steady hand. That's my problem. So I'm going to squeeze some out here. And just see. if I can paint it on faster than it's doing with this brighter bottle. Yeah. I can get a thicker line. I have better control with the brush. And one thing to always keep in mind is when you say are right-handed, you work from left to right so that you're not putting your hand into any wet paint that you've just put on the canvas. And if you're left-handed, then you work, I guess, from right to left. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe you work the same direction both times. I don't know. I'm right-handed. I was going to do it in white, but I thought that will blend in too much with the pore painting and it won't stand out. So that's why I decided to do the darker color. And if you have a shaky hand, it's good to be able to lean your hand on the surface of whatever you're painting on or to be able to prop your finger along the side of something, it'll give you better control over your shakiness. Like if I'm trying to hover over a painting and not put my hand on something, I'm not going to paint a straight line to save my life. So I'm just keeping it simple. And I, I even thought about doing a little bit of shading and I may still do that I'm not sure right now I'm just doing the outline so I'm gonna quit talking and just work and this is gonna be pretty repetitive so you kinda know what I'm gonna do here
Okay, so I traced out the parts with the um, using my pattern and a pencil, and then I went in and with a small fine brush, a very fine brush that's new, I took my paint and did the outline and let it dry and then I came back in and watered down the paint a little bit and did a, just a wash of the dark color around the edge to give it a little bit more depth and I am done with them. So I'm going to sign all of these and then I'm going to probably I'm going to show you a product that I like that I've not shown before I don't think finally found it. Gamvar Gloss Varnish and it is in my Amazon link below the video. This is, um, I'm going to read it to you, Gamvar Gloss saturates colors in your painting and gives your work a unified and protective gloss finish surface. Gamvar Gloss stays water clear and can easily be removed with Gamsol which is a Gamvar product. Gamvar gloss is odorless and can be applied when the thickest areas of your painting are dry and firm to the touch. May be used on oil or acrylic paintings. Brush apply, do not spray. So this is a really cool product. It will give you a slightly glossy effect. I don't really want these like shiny glossy. I am going to do the Liquitex high gloss varnish on the clock. I do want it to have some sheen. But I think on these I just want a slight sheen. And this works really well. You just put it on and you kind of just let it dry. And it dries pretty quickly. And um, It just gives a nice silk coat and it's easy for smaller paintings that I do. I don't use it on large paintings but I have used it on smaller paintings and it works really well. I was getting a sponge. I wanted to make sure and have a sponge here because I think I'm going to apply it with a sponge. And but first I'm going to sign all of them. And I am because these are oriented in a specific way with the, the emblem. I am going to sign the bottom right corner which is typically where I sign on most of my artwork unless I do it. If there's not a particular orientation, um, if, you know, if you could hang it any possible way, then I'll sign on the side of it. So I am going to sign these on the front. And I try to do it kind of really small and inconspicuous. You don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb. And then see on the back there's some fingerprints, but because this is metal, you can wipe your fingerprints of paint right off of this metal. That is why it is key to spray prime the front before you put a pour on it because if you don't spray prime it, the paint could very easily come off of the metal. Metal has to be primed first if it's going to be handled at all. Now, you know, once this is sitting somewhere in someone's home and they're not really touching it a lot, then you don't have to worry about, you know, scratching and things like that. But um, it, you always have to prime metal because it's a very, very slick surface. It's not porous. And so you do have to put the spray primer on and that gives your metal some uh, tooth for it to stick to. Okay, so they're signed and this one I'm going to do with Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. And yes, I just painted it, but it's, it's like a thin wash. It's not even very thick at all, so I'm not going to worry about waiting. And I used this brush the last time on September 20th, and it's October the 3rd. 
and this brush is still wet with varnish. It's been sealed in this bag. There's no crispiness to it, so it's not even started to dry or anything like that, so I can use this. So normally I pour onto a canvas, but because this did just get painted, I'm going to pour it onto my sponge. That way I don't move what I painted just today. That way I don't move it around any by pouring the, the varnish straight on. And a lot of times I'll scrub on the first coat on a canvas, but because this is wood and it's pretty smooth, I'm just lightly brushing it on. And then I'm going to go around the edge as well. And I always leave my push pins on until I'm totally finished with the product. So this is going to have some brush strokes. So it's going to take several coats to get it nice and glossy and um, no brush strokes showing. And I'm going to do it on the, um, the metal one too. So I'll do it again where I put it on the brush instead of straight onto the metal piece. The good part about this one is I don't have to do any sides because there are no sides. It's just a flat piece of metal. Gal I guess it's galvanized metal is what it is. So I'm just doing very, very light strokes in one direction. And I picked up something right there. So I'm just pulling that off. So I'm going to put this back in this sealed bag. Make sure there's no air. Seal it up. Wait a few hours and then I'll recoat this again. I made a mess on my bottle here so I'm just cleaning it up. I love this varnish though. This is my favorite. I'm just taking some, a wet paper towel and getting the varnish off my fingers and the paint off my fingers before I go any further. So the three canvases these three canvases I'm going to do this Gambar gloss. It does not have a smell. I've got a sponge and I'm going to tear it in half so I have just a little bit more control. I didn't want it too big. So I'm kind of dousing my sponge and I'm just like rubbing it on. And this is actually pretty, I actually put it on too thick. So I'm going to go over to the next one and do the same thing. I can probably use what I put on this first canvas. I can use it on all three canvases. That's how much I put on this sponge. This has no odor. And it looks actually super glossy just right now. But this does take, I noticed when I've used it before, it's super easy to use, but it does take a little bit of time to dry and it almost has like a tacky feel for quite a while so you just have to make note of that but this is actually if you're looking for something to wipe on this is pretty easy to use I don't want a super glossy perfect finish on these you know I could even take my sponge and do this and give it a little texture I don't really want it to be super shiny glossy. So, but it stays wet. This one, this product, I can even buff it around. This Gambar gloss stays wet for quite some time. So, you do have time to work with it. That's the nice part about this as opposed to 
Liquitex high gloss varnish or men wax poly um, polyacrylic that we like to use that's water based and thin but it does it kind of tacks up pretty quickly this does not so you do have time to scrub buff it on whatever but it's just going to be one coat that's all it needs I probably should have used this on these just to show you all of them, but we'll sh I'll show you at the end of the video when they're dry. I'll show you how good they look. And this Gambar gloss has a little bit of an oily finish, and you notice that in the uh, directions it said it could be used on acrylic and gloss. It's called Gambar Gloss Picture Varnish and um, I don't see the company name it's but gamblingcolors.com is at the bottom of the bottle but I got it on Amazon and I've used it just a few times in the last year or so I haven't used it regularly I think this one might be the easiest one to show you but you can see it's pretty glossy and like I said I don't mind the texture of the canvas showing or whatever I don't these don't have to be perfectly glossy so um, you know if there's a little bump or two in the paint and it sticks up I don't care about these because these are just uh, you know kind of sporty looking. They're not supposed to be fancy and fine art. They're like sporty looking. They're a, they're a UNC logo for the college, for basketball, what they're famous for, you know, that kind of thing. And I was going to show you too, like this is one that I did for the breast cancer awareness. It almost looks like it's glowing right here. That's the cool part about it. So like this has, with using Oetrol, as you can see, it mostly has a slight sheen to it. There's maybe um, maybe the neon color is the only one. The neon pink is the only one that doesn't have a glossy shine to it. I'm trying to get it to show again where it has some, sh but it's it has a satin finish look to it. So I'm not even gonna seal this with anything. I'll just leave it as is. I am going to leave these on the table to dry because I'm going to come back and recoat them multiple times with the Liquitex varnish. And I'm just going to take my sponge and wash it out and let it dry in between. Um, I'm not even going to use it again, but because of that gloss, Gambar gloss varnish, I'm going to wash it out with soap and water. Sometimes the pictures don't do something justice, but this even, the neon pink came out and it kind of looks like it's glowing. It's not super fancy, but it's on glass and I'm going to put it in a frame, but it's kind of pretty. And here's the big 12 by 12 that I did and it's dried. It took 24 hours to dry. It's on a canvas panel from Arteza and it did not warp. They're real, the 12 by 12s are really good about not warping. I haven't tried any other sizes, but these have worked really well. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll add the final coated varnished ones at the end. Thanks.
so for some reason I forgot to turn my mic on so I am doing a voiceover on this part I'm showing you the 8x10 where I use the gam var varnish and um, you know I traced the pattern on I made it by doing a photocopy of the, the logo and then I put wide strips of clear packing tape over it and cut it out and then put it on the canvas and traced around it with a pencil and then painted in the black bluish black outline and then did a little bit of shading just to give it some more dimension and I didn't want it to take over the uh, pour I wanted to be able to see through it and I didn't with this varnish which works really really well it takes a very minimal amount of it and I used a cheap sponge and slightly damp so I tore it in half there but you can see it was just a dollar sponge a pack of dollar sponges and when you put the gloss varnish on it it saturates it pretty significantly so I was able to do three canvases with just a douse or two of that varnish and it does show the grain of the canvas but it has a glossy finish and it does stay tacky a little bit longer than regular gloss varnish does but as you can see it turned out pretty glossy and there is some texture and that's just part of you know wiping on a gloss varnish but it's really super easy to do for just a good quick finish where you want to bring out the color again and um, not have brush strokes and um, it's in my Amazon link below all my videos it's in my Amazon recommendations and I've used maybe a little over half a bottle on about seven or eight paintings since I've had the bottle of varnish for over a year so it goes a long way here I am just nitpicking over a spilled piece of pink paint so my go-to varnish is always Liquitex high gloss varnish it is my absolute favorite this is 32 ounces and you cannot find it any cheaper I don't believe than on Amazon it is pretty much archival and uh, it will not yellow and um, it's just my favorite Minwax polyacrylic is probably the second closest favorite compared to it and the Minwax is a little bit thicker than the Liquitex is and it to me doesn't have as much work time it is a little bit harder to work with it quickly so I love the Liquitex high gloss varnish and I have discovered on smoother surfaces it requires so much less paint and it's a lot easier to use so this is the metal uh, galvanized metal stand that I painted on and that has two coats of the high gloss varnish and I go horizontally or vertically I switch the direction with each coat so that uh, you don't have those brush strokes going on as much and I always use the sponge brush that I keep in the bag to keep it saturated with the varnish and then I blow on it if it's not a large thing I blow on it and that will disperse the bubbles and um, it you know works pretty well I have a little crumb that I noticed that I dropped on the surface of it so I'm just trying to get it off which it comes off okay so that was the metal one and then this is the wood clock base and it's about an inch thick and 10 inches around and uh, I got my push pins on the bottom of that so you can get your fingers underneath and I'll be giving it another coat of paint on the back to pretty it up a little bit and I taped the center hole with masking tape so that it doesn't allow paint or varnish to seep down in that hole and keep it from 
uh, putting your clock mechanism in easily. So on this one, on the second coat of varnish, I didn't even have to go horizontally or vertically. I just put it on kind of thick and it pretty much self-leveled on its own and it looks really fantastic. It's not like resin, like glass, but it's got a nice, beautiful, glossy sheen and that's because it is a slightly sanded, you know, piece of wood and it's not, you don't have the texture of the canvas like you typically do. But two coats was, two coats was plenty of varnish for this piece. So I'm just really pleased with the way this one turned out. And I will add the, the clock arms. And I'll probably add like the 12, 3, 6, and 9 for the numbers and keep it pretty simple. And probably everything will be black uh, just to go with this better than like gold or something. So here are my three different things, even though I did three 8x10 canvases, I did the galvanized metal stand and then I did the clock. So I'm all done. This is a great product, you ought to give it a try. It really goes a good ways, so uh, check it out. I think you'll like it. And uh, then, you know, I'm going to always pull for my Liquitex high gloss varnish. You can get it online from Jerry's Art of Drama, Blick, Dick Blick, uh, Utrecht, a lot of those uh, big box uh, online art stores. You can get them probably f between $25 and $30 for a 32 ounce, but you, you may end up paying for shipping. That's why I use Amazon because it's about $25 and I get free shipping because I'm a Prime member. So the Prime membership is so worth it when you get free shipping on all the items you order and it comes to your door within two days, which is the fabulous part about it. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel. Down below the video there's Patreon, PayPal, the Amazon link recommendations, my website, my Facebook group. So make sure and go uh, also to Instagram and find Sandra underscore let and follow me there. And uh, keep following me on my art journey. Thank you again so much for watching.